the stains that you drip onto your wife beater whoa, whoa. is considered art. Can, can are we allowed to say that? Are we wife allowed to beater? call it that? Everybody anymore? knows what a wife beater is. I know, but are we allowed to? Well, call there's it actually that? two different forms of wife beater. Oh, uh, so when did you stop beating your wife? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, t- the sleeveless tank top is co- for those of you out. There, if you're a low information voter, you know what I'm talking for about. For those of you in Westwood, you know what I'm talking about. You're, you got it on right now. <laughs> Right. All summer long, right? Right. <laughs> so anyway. Anywho. Okay, okay. <laughs> Before we get too far off, yeah, let's get so. back to Rich. Read the 22 pieces that were submitted to National Review by very well-known conservatives and Republicans in the, in the country. I mean, Andy McCarthy among them, Michael Mukasey, and so on. The list goes. Glenn Beck uh, is the first name in the list. Um, what themes emerge to you? Well, there are a couple. One, if you truly are conservative, you believe in ideas and principles. Time out. Have you ever heard of the no true Scotsman fallacy? I have, but why don't you go run it down again? We've got a ton of new listeners. By the way, if you want to call in, add to the show, 772-49-SMITH. Right. So the no true Scotsman fallacy is when somebody when somebody says, uh, you know, well, um, I'm trying to think of an example. Like if uh, a Scotsman. All Scotsmen wear kilts. You mean a dress? A dress. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not a dress, but a kilt. kilt. Okay. All, all, all Scotsmen okay. wear a kilt. Right. And then somebody says, well, that guy over there, he's a Scotsman. Or maybe I'm a, Scot- I'm a Scotsman, and I'm wearing pants. Uh-oh. No <laughs> true Scotsman. No true Scotsman wears pants. Oh. It's a fallacy. You can't say that that guy's not a Scotsman because he's not wearing a kilt. Right. He's a Scotsman. The, anytime you hear no true blank, they're, they are committing a no true Scotsman fallacy. So he's, he's claiming that the only way that you could possibly be a conservative is by principles and values. His principles and values. Uh, with the GOPs. See, he's talking. No, he's, he's speaking on behalf. Uh, but he's saying, if you, you don't get in lock. See, that's what this a, is. You're not a true conservative. They've tried to take Trump to the, to the woodshed, but Trump don't know where it is, and he ain't going. He's too busy. And so they're coming to the media to, to take him to the woodshed in the media, they're and it's just ain't working. They're trying to subpoena him right. to the woodshed. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's what it is. And they can't catch up with him. Because so you have to serve him. Right. And you have to be present. Right. You have to have a witness. Right. And they're chasing him down. Ain't happening. Yeah, that's funny. It's not just attitudes. It's not just who you dislike. It's limited government. It's the Constitution. It's liberty. Those are the things that Wait, truly what? make this country what is, special. What, what is he saying, Trump? What part of those he is Trump not part of? All of, all of. What is he talking about? He, he no I don't good. care if we end up not endorsing Trump or endorsing Trump or whatever. Which, of course, we always end up endorse whoever the GOP Absolutely. nominee ends up being. Absolutely. That's a fact. If, if Bushy Bond Bushy bon hairdo gets the job, and Jebby, he's Jebby, Jebby Boy. Jebby Boy. Jebediah. Is, Jebediah is the nominee for the Republican Party. We are endorsing him. Against uh, Bernie Communism, Sanders. The communist. Bernie Sanders, right. We will vote for for Bushy, the Jebby, Jebediah. You got to. We will hold our nose and we'll do it because not doing so is a vote for communism. <sighs> Period. I get, Glenn Beck. I'm, I'm going to get to that. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'm going to get to that. I said we wouldn't have any Glenn Beck uh, sound bites. However, uh, this I week. I just can't believe this he week made it is sound special. like. This week he just special. gave the, the classic conservative principles. I'm waiting to hear examples. Please show me examples of where, you know. And they are basically afterthoughts to Donald Trump. He almost never talks about them. And if you're truly a conservative, you have a consistent record. We all change our minds on a few things every now and then when the facts change. But he has been on the other side on big, hot-button, defining issues like abortion, gun control, Taxes, you know, and even immigration. He points to Ronald Reagan, saying he too uh, came across the aisle after having been uh, on the other side, and that he's had that genuine evolution himself. And Ronald Reagan spent about thirty or forty years marinating in conservative 
thought and advocating for conservative ideas. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, hold on, hold on, folks. Because Reagan marinated in thought for 40 years, he couldn't pull the trigger. He had to wait for 40 years to marinate it. So the whole time he was just like... Marinating. He did have a failed presidential run. Oh, yeah. I'm marinating. 76. I'm marinating. Compared to... Okay, so that's acceptable to marinate for 40 years. That's acceptable. But for Trump to change his mind on issues three years ago, four years ago, two years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, that's not acceptable. However, Hillary can come out and say I'm I'm against gays, and then next week say I'm for gays, and we're we're green lit. Hypocrite. Nobody. Who do you know? And I know I'm I'm jumping to the other side. Who do you know that accuses a politician? I mean, you you hear the flip flop. Oh, he's flip flopping. Yeah, that's like a the. Go to buzzword, but 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 you, yeah. you your candidate flip uh, you flip flopping. I know, don't they all? I don't know. Apparently, I mean, even um, Obama was totally against gay marriage. Yeah, totally against. It. Well, and then you, like he said, he had Reagan flip flopped. I mean, I, I have flip flop. You flip flop, Carrie. You're yeah. a flip flop. Oh yeah, it was a total uh, bleeding heart flip flopper. Okay, he just didn't show up one day and said, "Hey, guess what? Now I'm a conservative." Okay, now he says, oh, that's the part of the sound about you missed. He says, no, no, Donald Trump just showed up one day. Hey, I'm with you. Yeah, I changed my Talk mind. Talk to Ann Coulter. She points out op-eds that came out in the 80s by Donald Trump, published in, uh, I guess it would be like the New York Times or whatever, that were clearly written by a conservative. Right. So what is he talking about? I mean, there are some flip-flops with the abortion and all that, but I think abortion was a lot more acceptable to both sides back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. It's, it's starting, people are starting to come to the realization they, that it is a holocaust. Well, they didn't, they didn't, I don't think they got it. I don't think, because out of sight, out of mind, and now all of a sudden we see what really is going down. Right, it's right. It's just unconscionable. And then with technology being able to do what it does to be able to see the baby, the child, the person in the womb. That and we have technology that has a better chance of having a baby survive at a younger premature date. Oh yeah. Than before. I think so I think the youngest is like five months, six months. Right. I've, I've been, unbelievable. This past week on uh YouTube on a YouTube video, I can't remember which video it is, but in the comment section I'm in a knockdown drag actually it's over now. They've They've conceded they have no, no leg to stand on. I've t completely, thoroughly defeated them in the debate about abortion. And that's we, we went back and forth for a long time, and it was in depth. It was a knockdown drag out. They were trying to say that, well, there's no such thing as a soul, and consciousness is, is, a, is a, a figment of your imagination. And so <laughs> th it's just a group of cells, and you can just kill uh, people whenever you want. Or whatever. It was. It was crazy. It was. It was a knockdown drag out. But wow. Yeah. That's a, okay. So, yeah. I. I don't. Like I am it. thoroughly ready to debate <laughs> anybody on the abortion question. But no. I mean, the the big thing was their whole thing is is twenty four weeks, and I'm like, why that arbitrary the date? Number? Why that number? Right. Where'd you come up? Where'd you invent that number? Right. What happens at twenty three weeks? Uh, Seven minutes. Si six <laughs> days. Twenty three hours and fifty nine minutes. With one second what's going ago. on what's going on with that group of cells is what they like to call right. it and how is it that everybody is completely different that that specific time frame would apply to every single person well he conceded that well i know that people develop at different speeds and all that and i think that obviously there could be somebody that might be ready uh to, to not be aborted a little bit earlier a little bit later. but you know rule of thumb would just use it as a guideline yeah. and i'm like you're murdering <laughs> a human life hey stop slipping around on that awesome sauce this is the number we gotta keep it oh my gosh <laughs> well you know what how about 18 years you can abort up to 18 years old <laughs> why can't we just come up with some arbitrary Debbie like. Wasserman Schultz says that her children were not uh, children until they were out of her womb. Well, a lot of a lot of liberals believe that. Right. Some of them were advocating for uh, two years because they really don't even no two years old. 
Yeah. Because they really aren't – they're just – they're pooping and there are, there are scientists out there who have made – actually have studies. They've done experiments and studies to show that there's a level of consciousness. And if you have children, you know what we're talking about. They literally are just eating, crying, pooping, and that's it. And the only reason they cry is because they're either hungry or they got a dirty diaper. And so – Scientists have actually done some studies and found out that there really isn't a level of consciousness that we'd understand as like thinking and uh, being aware of ourselves as right. a person until like two years old. If you want to make that arbitrary line, somebody could come along and say, well, this scientist over here or this group of scientists, science has proven oh, that there is no consciousness sci- until two years old. So we can abort up to that point. There's a consensus, a consensus. of, of scientists. By the way, that's a, a fallacy called the bandwagon fallacy. As soon as you hear, it's true. There's a, <laughs> right, look right. it up. Google no, it. Right, right. The bandwagon fallacy is that I win the debate argument. Because more people believe me than believe you. That's the bandwagon argument. Well, that's a what, total fallacy. Well, well, that's that's what libs do, though. Right. Yeah. The truth yeah. is that you could be right and have nobody believe you, and everybody believe the falsehood. Right. And, right. And guess what? You're, them, they're them, still right. Them pointing <laughs> out that you are outnumbered does not make you wrong. No. So, You're still right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. And another problem with Trump is he seems to believe what this country needs is a really effective strong man to make the trains run on time mm-hmm. when what we really need is the government to be cut down to size restored to its rightful role and then focus on the really important things like the borders and like creating the conditions one of the growth. things one of the pieces okay hold on okay well, the borders are so important why aren't you no, they're, they're not Trump. they're <laughs> not no no carrie you you didn't hear him right the borders are secondary right. to all the government removal of government programs. First of all, we got to take the government and put it back in the box where it came from. All right, well, hold once on a we, second. Hold on, once we do that, then we'll get to the borders. <laughs> we'll get to the borders then. One thing at a time, man. You can't eat and chew at the same time. Right, and those borders... Ain't that important? They say eat and chew. Eat and chew. You can't do <laughs> that at the same time. <laughs> no, but check this out, though. Um, is he endorsing Jeb Bush? Is he endorsing Chris Christie? Because I don't know. I don't how know. could you come no out and go and start railing against Trump when you're trying to advocate for the very thing that you will not get from an establishment guy? No. The reduction of government? No. no there ain't nobody guy, up there. Does this guy hate Bush? Does he hate he Chris to. Christie? He would have to. I'm talking about George W. Bush. Oh, does, he oh, also, oh. does he also hate Jeb Bush and every other establishment guy that we know for a fact is going to do nothing to reduce the size of government in any department? There's not a single department that will be reduced in any way, shape, or form. No. Look what Paul Ryan did. Oh, I, I was, What part of that I was is ta- reducing government? I was talking about him as the show opened. And there's some big breaking news this week. Obama and his his partner in crime, Paul Ryan, are involved in. Anyways, anyway, so yeah, I what is if he? If this he's is a, national, oh, and right. I, I'm, I want to make this a point. National Review is coming out haunting heads. Well, here's the, here's so the they deserve our feedback. Let's get real. Let's get real. If this particular guy talking is he's the editor in chief of National Review, okay, if. He endorses Cruz, then I really don't have an argument against that particular sentence. Okay. Because I believe Cruz will actually, against the will of every single senator and representative and just everybody, establishment, GOP, liberal, doesn't matter. They're going to be against him, and he will do everything in his power to slash. I believe that. So if he endorses Cruz... I'm okay with him saying that. However, he's giving a list of names of people against Trump that he obviously doesn't represent. Because if he's saying that it's all about reducing the size of government, then he's only talking about people that are against Cruz. I'm sorry, against Trump, who are for Cruz. I, I think National Review does support Cruz. Okay. All right, but then what about this list of other people? He's not hes not speaking on their behalf. No. He's speaking on behalf of only those who are endorsing Cruz. Right. Because if, you, if you're going to sit here and tell me 
We need to vote for Jeb Bush. Because unlike Trump, 